got my two stoves done. Um, I was going to monkey around and put some uh, folding legs on one, and then I decided, you know, it's really not necessary. I was just going to play around with it, but I want to keep it really, really simple. There's no need to complicate it. But on this one here, I did put some little legs on. I just put in three U-bolts and bent them. Gave them a little bit of feet. That way, if I want to put the stove up on a table, I don't have to worry about the pot getting very hot. So that gives a little air space underneath. But it's really not necessary to have these on here. I mean, you can just put the pot on a couple bricks if you need to. But I was just playing around. I've gotten lots and lots of recommendations for putting in a little shelf for the firewood. Um, before I built the rocket stove, I looked at other rocket stove designs, and just about every single one had the little shelf in here. And the only reason why I didn't add it to my first stove was because this is only 4-inch pipe. And I didn't want to cut down on the room that I had for firewood. So I was going to add a little piece of pipe right straight through here into the firebox. And before I did that, I, I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little shelf. This is just a little piece of metal, you know, that I stuck in here. And that works just fine. It works really good. So why argue with success, right? Now on this one here, this is just the leftover piece that I cut the circle out of. And then I just bent over the edges, and I just stuck that there. And I'm going to rest the firewood on top of that, and that should give a nice vent. And we'll see how this works. Now here, I just did some U-bolts again. And I'm finding, you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch works out really good in height for me. So that's what I'm just going to continue to do. But, you know, build yours however you want to. You could always just put something like that on there, of course, you know, wire it there, a little U-bolt or just some wire or whatever, and that'll be great for smaller pots. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's so many different things that you can do on these stoves. I mean, you can make them really, really complicated um, and get high tech with it or go very, very simple. Now, when I first showed my rocket stove project in part one, um, and people saw me packing in sand around the pipe for insulation. I really couldn't believe how many people responded where they were frowning upon me using sand. Kind of blew me away, actually, really. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I certainly am always open to suggestions, you know, so don't misinterpret me there. Um, I was just amazed at how many people were against using the sand. And I had maybe maybe a dozen different materials suggested. Um the only reason I went with sand was because I have plenty of it and it's free. And plus it was an experiment and it actually worked out really, really good. It was a good insulator and the stove really doesn't even weigh much, maybe less than a case of beer. So I'm really happy with it. Um, one of the items suggested was a rock wool insulation. I'm sure it works out outstanding for it. I looked it up online from the links that were provided for me. Um, it looks like great stuff, but it's 40 something dollars a roll, and I have plenty of sand, which is free. So I did have one guy, I think his username was Woodchuck Hills, New York, if I remember right. He suggested using wood ashes instead of the sand, and that was an outstanding idea. Uh, wood ashes are fireproof, they don't weigh anything. Uh, I have plenty of them, and best of all, they're free. So I'd buy that beer. I'd buy that man a beer if I could. Yes, sir. Um, so anyway, with the second stove, because it was bigger, I used a combination of uh, sand and wood ashes, and it worked out great. So I'll show you uh, the rest of my project here. Look at that thing roar, man! That's a smokeless fire, burning super hot. I wonder if that would even be enough to run my canner. Now as you can see they're both drawing really good. All I did to this one was add a little tin shelf like that was suggested by a lot of people. That's working out really good. Neither fires are smoking. They're burning good and hot. I am thrilled to death with this. The six inch one is working out way better than I had expected. A lot of folks were talking about the formula that you need to use where uh, my stove would have to be quite a bit taller. But I wanted to experiment and keep it compact. 
and this is just working out great. I couldn't be happier with it. I have no complaints about this at all. The stove is nice and compact. I have a feeling that might even burn hot enough to run my canner, uh, and that would be fabulous. Because in an emergency situation, if the grid was down on a permanent basis, I would certainly want to ration what propane I had. And if I could uh, go out and uh, harvest a few game animals and then can them so I could preserve my food without the use of any kind of power uh, and be able to do so just with this burning a handful of uh, small branches and stuff like that, that would be fabulous. Now I made the six inch model to the exact same manner that I made the four inch. I followed the same steps, all worked out great. Uh, the only thing I did differently is I packed in about four inches of sand and then I packed in a bunch of wood ash and then a little bit of sand on the top. But aside from that, the whole process was the same. Now for just coming out, throwing a fry pan on, cooking something nice and quick, the four inch model is the way to go. Um, it burns hot and fast with nothing more than little dinky twigs. And if you're using a small fry pan or a small pot, since this only has a four inch exhaust, a small pot will sit really nice right here and you won't have a lot of flames spilling out around the outside uh, perimeter of your pot like you would with the larger exhaust here. For cooking something that's gonna require a longer cooking time or boiling a pot of water or a big kettle or something, this would be a way to go because you have a much more stable fire. You're using bigger material. Uh, you don't have to tend it as much as you do burning little dinky twigs. So for quick cooking, the four inch is excellent. For something like a big kettle of water, uh, this would be the way to go. Again, because you don't have to tend it as much. You've got a bigger fire, more coals. So they have their pros and cons. One thing again, uh, the six inch T, you can find it in any hardware store and they're made out of regular steel. They're not galvanized. In the four inch, all I can find is galvanized. Uh, you might be able to find stainless steel, but it's probably gonna be really expensive. Now, another option to make a small stove, uh, there are other YouTube channels giving some pretty good directions on making one of these with just cutting up some soup cans and coffee cans. Some pretty cool designs out there. You could uh, look them up and then maybe use the stainless pot and instead of using a galvanized tea pipe, just use the uh, coffee cans and stuff. So there's a lot of options, lots and lots of different ideas that you can use for these things. Um, this is the way that I made mine. I shared my experiment with you. But of course, by all means, tweak the design any way you want and make it suit your needs. What I really like about the six inch model is the uh, six inch pipe you can find anywhere and it's regular steel, it's not galvanized. Now this here, I'm gonna let the fire burn for quite a while. I wanna burn off all the paint off of the stove pipe. The stove pipes you buy now have a black paint on them. So I wanna just burn all of that off before I'm cooking food. So again, if you're gonna use the four inch and you get the galvanized pipe, run a few fires through it first, burn off all that galvanizing before cooking food with it. Such handy little stoves to have, they're incredible. For such a little investment, to be able to have the peace of mind and know that you'll be able to cook your food or boil water in a situation when propane or things like that aren't available. If the grid went down for an extended period of time or for a permanent basis due to a solar flare or tsunami or some natural disaster or even a terrorist attack, as nowadays with all of the electronic warfare and things like that that we have, they can throw out electronic impulses and knock the grid down. And in our society where everybody is so dependent on the grid, but yet 
very few people make any preparations for when the grid goes down. It really doesn't make any sense, especially if you have a family. If you think that you'll just be able to run down a Walmart if the grid went down and pick up a camping stove and some propane and drinking water during a natural disaster, you're being disillusioned. Because if the grid went down for a permanent basis or for an extended period of time, the stores are going to be cleaned out. And chances are there's going to be looting and rioting and all of that. It's going to become a life or death situation. Now anybody can go out in the woods and pick up sticks and pine cones and break off little twigs off of branches and stuff like that and cook their food and boil water if they need to. And for such a little investment, this one here, it's a 16 quart stock pot. I think it was $11. The six inch tea, I think I paid $14 for that. And three U bolts. Pretty small investment to have the peace of mind and the security to be able to cook your food and boil water if the grid went down. Plus, it's kind of a novelty. I enjoy using these. Um, they're a lot of fun. It's it, for me to go out and get handfuls of little twigs like this and make that steak and cheese that I did in my part two of this video. I don't know. That's just a novelty for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun putting these stoves together and I'm sure you will too. Like I said already, Knowing how to cook your food and purify water during trouble times? Well, that's just good backwoods logic. Yes, sir.